Listen, welcome back to the From the Cave channel and From the Cave Studios, where we dive into news stories and other trending urban topics and cut the bull. And we just see it is what is what it is for what it is. We see the truth, however you want to say it. Uh, Israel did put a tweet out. They took out a top uh, Hezbollah commander. So we're going to get into that. You know, whenever I cover these news stories and learn more about them, I like to bring y'all with me. So we ain't going to talk too much about it. Let's go. The Hezbollah terror group now confirming its longtime leader, Hassan Nasrallah, is dead. Nasrallah, also one of the terrorist organization's founders, killed in a targeted Israeli strike in Lebanon that happened just yesterday. The Israeli military saying Nasrallah was with Hezbollah leadership at the organization's headquarters when that precision strike was carried out. Hezbollah now put out a statement saying Nasrallah, quote, has joined his fellow martyrs, but also vowing to, quote, continue the holy war against the enemy and in support of Palestine. So you see Israel still striking with their Lebanon. How long until either Lebanon or Iran take that as a, a act of war? We don't know. But they striking. They're getting that precision striking. That Yahoo know he can't do anything after Gaza. What's still going on with Gaza? He can't even afford to not be precise uh, striking within another country. We also heard from Iran's supreme leader urging Muslims via social media today to rise up against Israel. A lot to discuss right now, so I do want to bring in a guest. We do have Major Jerome Spielman, a spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces, joining us live to discuss the strike and, of course, the aftermath. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and discuss all of this. Thank you for having me, Josh. Of course. Well, first off, can you break down what you're able to tell me about that precision strike that took place in Lebanon? Sure. Uh, late yesterday evening, the IDF sent a, a fighter squadron towards Dachia. Dachia is a word that most of you have learned over the last week. It is essentially a residential neighborhood uh, just outside of Beirut. It's uh, kind of the southern area of Beirut where Hezbollah leadership have essentially been hiding inside of bunkers and planning attacks on Israelis and on American civilians over the last 30 years. And uh, and essentially what we have here is the IDF uh, fighter jets struck those command and control centers. You had Hezbollah in that area uh, and it was confirmed just a few minutes ago. You know, with the other strikes, it caused the Hezbollah leader to put out a bunch of videos and things like that. Like, we will do this in tweets and stuff like that. You think Israel might have used those other attacks as just, like, a little carrot stick to get him to come out? And once he did that, like, hey, we got him? Because if Israel has the power to, you know, intercept some pagers, a couple hundred, probably thousands of pagers, at least hundreds of pagers, and then put bombs in them and get them all out and then make them explode, then they probably could have baited him to come out. They didn't know exactly where he was at. They're like, okay, we got four locations. Then they prompted him to make a response to everything that was happening. They're like, ah, we got you. You know, like just like Osama Bin Laden, we follow his uh, mail carrier back and everything. Could have did the same thing. Go by Hezbollah that, in fact, Hassan Nasrallah, the architect of evil, who's led that organization, who was really uh, brought up in that organization, who has the blood of countless Israelis and Americans, Again, pre-9-11, Josh, Hezbollah had claimed more American lives than any other terror organization, and he was eliminated in that strike. We do know that that is the word, of course, from the IDF. We've also heard it from Hezbollah. Is there any concern based on the situation here that unfolded? I know there's probably a lot of undercover classified information, but is there any question as to whether Nasrallah might actually be alive, or is it 100% he is dead? Well, you know, it, there was confirmation on the Israeli side, and then as soon as Hezbollah reconfirmed that information, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, we can we can take it as close to 100%. It's not in Hezbollah's interest to admit that their, you know, arch archetype of evil has been killed. Um, it, you could hear the comments you said earlier from Iran causing, you know, Iranians to rise up against Israelis. But, you know, what's very, very um, upsetting about this, his bullet continues to strike just behind me, in the air behind me, not that long ago. There was an interception. So, you know, we have 
dealt has the offensive there still continue over in Beirut and Lebanon because again we do have Nasrallah eliminated but is there more to to do there there is and you know as we've said any barrel gun cannon rocket missile or suicide drone that is pointed at Israel is an imminent threat to the state of Israel, is a valid target, is the target we want to eliminate. You know, we really are here for one simple reason, Josh, is to protect the citizens and civilians, the men and women of the state of Israel that live on the northern border, that have left their homes. The state of Israel has been terrorized by Hezbollah for 12 months now, and we've showed an enormous amount of patience. We've warned the Lebanese people, which we have no war with, but that they need to try to run in Hezbollah, Hezbollah directly, and the world. That if yo, that's crazy. So if Israel has the right to strike, but to tell the Lebanese people like, yo, it ain't really a, a war with you, uh, but we're just going to strike them over there. Can you imagine somebody saying like, yo, we ain't really got no war with Americans, but you got the Bloods, the Crips, the Latin Kings, MS-13, yeah, we striking them. Hell's Angel, yeah, we striking them. And then just some Americans get killed. That shit wouldn't fly. It wouldn't fly in Israel, too. If there was a gang in Israel that it, Iran was fighting. Th you think Iran can fire inside of Israel? Just say, yo, we're not fighting at all, you people. Just some of the bad guys. Basically say, you're not doing enough. Of course, I like in know. a normal country, we can't allow our civilians to be forced out of their homes. And sadly, as, as you and I, many of your viewers know, Hezbollah is so cowardly that they hide beneath their own civilians, which is just truly despicable. So... It, the the world uh, should be you know celebrating today that one last truly evil guy is gone, but at the same time be very concerned that his bulla is still alive and well and needs to be dealt with. It is completely disoriented right now. The structure and command and control have been dealt a major blow, and it certainly weakened their abilities. We're not conning our chickens before they hatch. They're still. Uh, an ability there. There's over 50,000 Hezbollah terrorists that have been trained. There's over, you know, 150. Let me see the, if, if anything else has come out on that within the last hour. Just, just so you know, like one thing they teach us, especially in the military, if you were any type of like uh, intel or whatever, the old wars, like against Germany and things like that, when they had like a dictator or one leader or Stalin, whatever it was, it was. That's when it was like a snake. That's why we get that don't tread on me, right? Everything's a snake. It's like you cut off the head of a snake, the body dies because it was one person leading them, right? They had one thing. Even in the black community, we had like a, a, the, the civil rights movement. Some people could say that's more like that's a snake. You cut off Martin Luther King. You cut off or uh, on the other side, you cut off Malcolm X and the, the body died. Everything else died. They all separated. These terrorist organizations, they know that their time is limited. They expect to die for their calls. So they're they're not a snake. They're more like an octopus. Right? Like you're like there's not really one central thing. There's like you they're cutting off tentacles. Like he's a tentacle. Even uh, the leader is like they didn't cut off there's not really a central head. And some octopus you cut off pieces, they grow right back. Let me see what this Netanyahu warns Israel can strike and hit anywhere. Let's see what this is about. But on that note, before we even get back to it, they're not just cutting off one piece of the snake and like snake ain't going to regenerate things. These are octopuses. They got multiple things. You think that's the head? No, it's not. It's a tentacle. And then you go to another tentacle, but the other tentacle in the group back. By the time they got different means of control, they they know the the their their structure, right? They got a deeper structure than the U.S. It's like he die, he get in, he get in position. He die, he come in position. He if they die together, then he go. They know what they're doing. Let me see some. Let's see what this is about. Netanyahu warns Israel can hit in Iran or Middle East. Anyway. Some breaking news now, and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived back at Tel Aviv Airport in Israel a short time ago. Now, shortly after arriving, sirens sounded and explosions were heard. As okay. If someone comes to kill you, rise up and kill him first. The state of Israel killed yesterday Hassan Nasrallah. The yeah, they, they, his message is definitely different than the you know, American Christian message. He said if they rise up and kill you, kill them first. That's more like the Middle East logic. That's not U.S. logic. We don't say that. But hey, I get it.
park murderer. We settle the score with the person who's responsible for the killing and assassination of so many Israelis and many people of other na nationalities, including dozens of Americans and French people. He wasn't just another terrorist. He was the terrorist. He was the main engine of Iran's axis of evil. Him and his people were the architects of the plan to destroy and destruct Israel. He wasn't only operated by Iran. In many cases, he operated Iran. And this week, we reached the conclusion that the devastating blows leveled that Hezbollah by the IDF will not be enough. The elimination of Nasrallah is a necessary condition for the fulfillment of our goals, sending back the Israelis who live near the northern border to their homes and bringing to an end in the region for decades. Because as long as he's alive, he would have been able to rehabilitate quickly the capabilities of Hezbollah. So I gave the instruction, and Nasrallah is no longer with us. His killing brings closer the return of our people in the north to their homes and also the return of the hostages from the south because as Sinwar sees that Nasrallah won't come to his rescue, this increases the chances for our hostages going back. I'd like to thank the IDF, the Shin Bet, the Mossad, and the Intel Directorate for their wonderful achievements. Citizens of Israel, we have some great achievements, but we haven't completed the task at hand yet. We're going to be facing significant challenges over the next few days, and we're going to stand together and face them. Nasrallah called us spider webs, but instead of spider webs, he discovered tendons of steel of a united and powerful nation determined to, safe, to safeguard its future. And not only did Nasrallah discover this, the entire Middle East discovered that all those who oppose the axis of evil, all those who are languishing under the terrible tyranny of Iran and its proxies in Syria and Lebanon and so many other places, all these people today have new hope. And I'm saying to the citizens of those countries. Israel is standing with you. And to the Ayatollah regime, I wish to say, those who strike at us, we will strike back. There is no place in Iran nor in the Middle East where the long arm of Israel cannot reach. And today, you already know just how true that is. Citizens of Ooh. Israel, these are great times. We are at a turning point. It seems to be a historic turning point. A year ago, on October 7th, our enemies attacked us, and they thought that Israel was about to be annihilated. A year ago. A year later, blow after blow, achievement after achievement, they now understand just how much their hopes have now dissipated. Israel is now on them. We are winning and we are determined to continue to strike at our enemies, to send our citizens and our people back to their homes and bring back all of the hostages. We do not forget them for one minute. My brothers and sisters, citizens of Israel, on this day, I am saying to you once again listen that <laughs> yahoo talking his shit he getting in his bag he proud of that they ain't gonna admit to the pages and everything else but they're proud of that well i mean basically they don't have to at this point it's silly but it's crazy that israel gets to basically if they they get to fess up to what they want to and then say uh no no comment on the other stuff so it's it's, it's silly but i mean i can't be sad about him right he was a, a terrorist leader he supposed to have killed women children everything else so if they tell me about him it's true good riddance may his god judge him in heaven for his deeds but that's two things can be certain right you can have you can have a bad guy and then another bad guy chasing after him right like in the movies like the punisher when his family get killed, we all accept that, especially as Americans. Like, okay, he get to punish him. Eye for an eye, he's a punisher. He's punishing the people who did something to him. But if the punisher was destroying buildings and downtown and killing innocent families on his way to seek retribution, we'd be like, come on, killer. Come on. If Batman killed a bunch of civilians on his way to stop the Joker, he would not exist. The police would be like, no, we, we, we could do a better job than that. We don't need your help. It's only because... They have higher moral ground to stand on. And Batman, like, no, I'm not killing nobody. Hell, I do a better job than the police. They're going to get people killed. Let me turn this down. But let me know, like, geez, is Iran just going to take this? And for Israel to be a, 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 a Western country, so to speak, a Western country in the Middle East, can they have a, a an agenda like, if you do something to us, we're going to do something to you? Because they're not equal. We'll be talking like they're equal, but these are little 
It's like the military versus the Bloods and the Crips. Yeah, the Bloods and the Crips are bad and they need to be taken care of. But with military equipment and drones and predators in the air just taking them out, poof, poof, that's a blood car. Can you imagine four Bloods in a car going down the street and the predator drone just hitting them? Poof, poof. It would be unacceptable. It'd be like, ah, come on. We could have went in with some drones and shot some uh, tear gas in there or something, smoked them out. There's too many other non-lethal ways, which is cost more, it's more expensive, it's more time. But that's our duty as a morally superior nation like we claim to be. That's just our duty. But let me know what y'all uh, thinking. Like, share, subscribe, all that. This is crazy. Uh, let me know if you think that it's going to escalate after this. What's going to be the next move? Israel just keep striking and maybe going to somewhere else. I mean, the only place they really haven't struck is Egypt. Uh, I guess they get along with them. But it's come, it got to come to an end. Netanyahu killing everybody that he should be talking to, try to work out a deal. He's like, he kills them. Like, oh, let's work out a ceasefire. Okay, with him, boom, he's dead. Who else? Oh, boom. Oh, we can't. We're just trying to come to a deal. Come on. It has to be some type of way. This is spreading. We worry about Russia. That Russia don't seem to be spreading. Israel, what we need to watch. Netanyahu's a little too proud of himself. Just a little, I don't know, something about him. Just look at this picture again. Look, look, look. It's just something about his face that I just don't trust. He's like a man that's trying to escape. His mission is just, it's a just mission to avenge the people of Israel and get their, their, their hostages back. But that don't mean the right man is up for it. We're saying that he is not up for it. He is bad. Not the people of Israel, not the state of Israel. He, Netanyahu, and his cabinet. But let me know what you think in the comments. Peace.